So here we are with Lucy DeGray, and I am Matt Cahill, co-director and co-founder of Hogfish. And we're really excited to be here today to talk to you about an upcoming event called Between the Sea and Me, or Maine. And it is a grief ritual for the Maine Coast community. And we are also welcoming the New Hampshire Coast community, who is very close by. And we're also welcoming a new puppy in the background of Lucy's camera, who's making a beautiful entrance for this event. So we thought it would be helpful to just talk a little bit. Um, Lucy has been certified in grief ritual training and brought this to my attention and how powerful and meaningful uh, an event like this can be. And um, that was why we first wanted to present our first Between the Sea and Me, which was last March um, in response to the January storms. And uh, we thought it might be helpful to share with other people like me who didn't know that grief rituals existed or what they are or why we do them and who they're for. Just a brief little intro to what is a grief ritual? Why would I want to come to one? And who are they for? So that being said, Lucy, I'd love for you to share a bit with us about those questions, if you can. Sure. Um, so I learned about grief rituals through Francis Weller, who teaches on the West Coast in Northern California. And um, a grief ritual is somewhere, uh, it, it's something that's kind of missing from our culture at the moment. Um, it's something between an artistic experience, uh, but one that's participatory um, and a kind of sacred experience. Um, though that's been kind of going away from our culture and maybe a little dried up, maybe we're not really releasing in that space as much as maybe they did a hundred years ago or 200 years ago. Um, so a grief ritual is a place to pour out your grief. There are, um, views of grief as being actually an offering for the other world and what that other world is is open-ended it's the world of the ancestors it's the it's the world of the spirits of the earth um of, of kind of everything around us and our tears our grief is actually a gift to that world um and Francis started offering this work. Um, he was actually taught by Maladoma Somme, who came from the Dagara tribe of Burkina Faso. And uh, Maladoma and his wife, Sabanfu Somme, kind of were tasked by their tribe to come to America and help heal America <laughs> because they realized that the grief was kind of this poison. Um, and as grief, has kind of become privatized uh, and we don't have spaces to to share kind of those more shadow parts of our emotional world right so um, grief uh, rage those are things that we keep out of the social layer but um, I, I think it oh, I'm blanking on the name of the philosopher right now but um, someone talks about the being, kind of, yeah um, <laughs> Put it in the show notes. Um, but there being three layers uh, of emotional experience, the first being the social layer um, that we all know. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. How, how are your kids, etc. cetera? Um, the second layer being the shadow layer, or what I, what I was just talking about, grief, rage, betrayal, um, sorrow. And then the third layer being deep soul contact. And so the idea is that we can't make that deep soul contact unless we go through the shadow layer. But if we don't have a container for the shadow layer, then we don't get to that deep soul contact. And um, having a place where we can do that communally uh, just made so much sense to me. And, and grief is this thing that overwhelms us. It, it feels way too big to carry on our own. And so we either block it out, um, which I think can lead to all kinds of physical ailments, you know, depression, um, or we put it in the wrong space, maybe with our intimate partner. Um, so sharing communally really made sense to me and, and also uh, being an artist and, and being from the arts. Um, I think Matt and I both wanted, a, wanted to create communal events that are really containers that really bring people together 
where we really can make that deep soul contact together and have a safe space to share those kind of more shadow feelings. So, uh, Matt, I'm sure I'm kind of drifting off, but um, <laughs> no, I, would, I, would, I would love for you to talk about why you got interested in, in grief work and kind of what it's meant to you. Sure. Um, well, just a moment to respond to that beautiful explanation and thoughts. I thought one that was really helpful for me was something that I've heard picked up from several people along the way, but the idea that we can't fully appreciate what we have or feel gratitude until we feel the grief of the loss or we and the flip that we can't fully grieve until we appreciate how much we love something. And I think to me, that would be a translation for me of your talk about soul contact, um, right? And like the container to allow yourself to experience those emotions so that you can make that deep connection, that meaningful connection, whether it feel like grief or gratitude in the moment. And um, yeah, I think especially... I mean, if you can hear right now, I'm lucky enough to live near the coast and you can hear a little bit of wave action and the breeze might be <laughs> rustling my hair. Um, <laughs> and that we in Maine or on the coast, I think we're lucky enough to have a, a lot of us to have a strong, deep daily experience with nature. And, um, and I think then we feel very strongly when things start to shift. Um, and I'm not from here originally, but my husband is, and that's one of the reasons we moved back. And when we first moved here, uh, we got snowshoes for our wedding, um, where Lucy was actually <laughs> one of the efficient singer and, um, mm -hmm. in the party, but, and I was so excited to use the snowshoes and we, we have used them, but it really doesn't snow here as much as I thought moving from I'm originally from Maryland and then we were artists in New York and then came up here and Edwin said when he was a child just which was now I don't want to give his age away but um no he's by but maybe 30 80 years, years ago <laughs> yeah 40 some years ago that um once it snowed around Thanksgiving ish there was snow on the ground pretty much all the way until the thaw in April <laughs> And um, and that's changed amongst many, many, many other really, really important and deep, meaningful things for many people, including their livelihoods. And um, and these January storms in particular that kind of happened back to back or winter storms last winter were just so devastating to the coast and so devastating to uh, people and their livelihoods. And um, I think it's been a deep question for me. I come from a family of doctors um, and wanting to in some ways following their footsteps to make a difference in the health of people but I was just always called the storytelling and the arts space um, and I think in the culture that I grew up in a lot of times maybe art's best gifts were raising money for important things um, was one idea like fundraisers and another one was maybe taking your mind off your cares for a bit um, and maybe a third was the idea of kind of shining a light on important ideas through documentaries and 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 not uh, putting down any of that work, which is really important and beautiful. But I, I was called to find always art that mattered, art that, as I've been learning, is something that really, I think, is connected to people and cultures who are connected to place throughout history and time, which I think um, is the indigenous cultures all over the world. I think our, our Wabanaki people here in Maine, I think, um, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from the Upanishads and cultures in India and um, and also Mali Doma Somme and his ritual book. <clears throat> and when I heard that you had done this grief ritual training, I was interested. Um, I think as an artist and a sensitive person, I, I tend to feel things strongly and I tend to bottle them up and share them with some close friends. But uh, it was a really deeply moving and powerful experience to be able to share some of that in a structure that was thought through and um, held and that felt very safe because it was thought through and held and it wasn't happenstance and it wasn't therapy. Um, it was just some friends and even some people I didn't know. And we did the thing that we're talking about doing in this ritual, which was um, following a prompt of I remember or I, I didn't get to or I mourn with Lucy can talk more about those prompts. Um, and then we wrote and just noticing what came up. And I think I still remember the interesting thing for me well, amongst many was 
the moment when you said, now you have to share what we wrote. Um, Cause I'd never done that. I'd never spoken out loud to a group um, of kind of strangers and some people I knew kind of some of my innermost feelings or thoughts that came up um, and it was scary. Um, and part of me was like, I don't want to, <laughs> but uh, it was interesting on many levels, but one was, it was one of the parts that I thought was kind of banal and didn't really mean that much to me when I started to really, something hit and in the act of saying it and expressing it to community that really felt like something moved through me or uh, shifted or changed, um, that stayed with me for several days afterwards. Um, and I think really started or was a part of the process of me actually, I, I think, I think we run away from the word healing in our culture a lot, but of me healing, of me processing my own grief. Um, and I felt like that was something that Hogfish with our mission of regenerative arts, with which is the idea of kind of going beyond sustainable to do something that is helpful to society, to community, to nature, um, which is also this very old idea. I think that cultures that are place-based and community-based have had for a long time with their art, but I think our current Western patriarchal, colonialist, you name it, um, culture has gotten away from with our art form. Um, and there's a, a real desire, I think, for many people to return to that place-based, community-based work. And so it seemed like, wow, what if we held a grief ritual for people experiencing this damage during the storms and what's happening to the main coast um, so that we can collectively hold this so that people can tell their stories and have them be heard and witnessed and maybe something can move through them as well. And um, we were experimenting and learning with a lot of these principles that Lucy had from her work with Frances Weller and a lot of beautiful practitioners here in Maine, um, including art therapist Sarah May Sator and wellness coach Sarah Goodwin and Reiki healers Selena Lemieux and Jessica Labonte. And I also am a Reiki healer and Alexander practitioner and shamans Ma uh, and Carl and um, Kylie Wilkins O'Brien, social worker and death doula and Lucy and, 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 and we had food from the sea uh, donated by Atlantic Sea Farms and Cup of Sea and just kind of lots of access points for people to heal. And the really beautiful thing was that I think it made a difference. Um, we've heard a real outpouring of gratitude and meaning and both in the ritual and afterwards. And there was so much interest that we were invited to come uh, do it again. Um, Cause it feels like this kind of work is, it's like tending a garden that <laughs> you can't just um, plant it and leave it that uh it's something to continually show up for and that the more we show up um the more there's an ability to trust and the more fertile it is to lay these seeds of meaning and connection and soul contact i like that word um so i'm excited for this second iteration and really excited at wells nature reserve the team is so lovely and they're so supportive and the space is so beautiful and we were so lucky that space gallery in in portland um offered to host and donated the space for our first event, um, which is in Portland. And then it's amazing space. And it was in March in Maine. So we weren't going to really go outside. <laughs> but the Wells Nature Reserve has access to the ocean, which I just think for a grief ritual about our relationship to the coast is so powerful to um, have this moment to kind of get in touch with how we're really feeling both individually and as a community to release some bracing in our souls and in our bodies and then to head to the ocean and have a kind of culminating ritual together on the coast and come back and have some food and process together. So yeah. well, I rambled a while. But <laughs> I'm gonna add, that? I'm gonna add in Matt what you were talking about, which is the writing shuttles. And 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 maybe we can just talk through, you know, what what's it gonna look like when you come? What what's expected of people when they come to ritual? Right. Um and ritual to me, um it's about trying to get out of time, right? It's about really being in the moment and kind of losing that sense of time. And that's why we've wanted to kind of expand the time that we're doing this in um, so that people can really come and relax into this process, right? Um, and Matt talked about kind of continually showing up for something. Another way to say that is that 
our, our grief um, over time hardens and we have to kind of work it like cold clay <laughs> and there are different ways to work it right there are different things that work it. like Music. scar tissue right kind of yeah sort of. sure yeah yeah exactly yeah thinking from a from a body point of view yeah okay. Music can can work on that a little bit. Moving your body can work on that. Reiki can work on that. Journaling, writing, and and then reading what you wrote can work on that. Um, dancing together or going through just simple repetitive steps, being by the ocean, being led through something. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about with the the schedule of the day. All of those things will happen. They're all you know participate as you wish. Um, I will say that the writing shuttles that Matt is talking about, um, these are these prompts that just kind of get us going ab ab about where we're at at that moment. Um, we do these in small groups with uh, one facilitator per group, kind of four or five people per breakout group. Um, and the way that the writing shuttles work, um, everyone writes to the same prompt or like a little list of prompts. Uh, we write for 10 minutes, and then at the end of those 10 minutes, everyone shares what they wrote. And you just simply read what you wrote out loud, and then the only response that you give is thank you. And uh, the reason for that is there's just, there, grief is not a problem to solve. There's no, and there's also nothing to say that that witnessing and just letting it out of your body, letting it out of your mouth, what you wrote down on paper is part of the process that kind of works that grief. And once the grief is warm, then things can move. Then, then you're, then you're letting it, you're letting it move. You're letting it process, right? You're letting it integrate. You're letting it out. You're letting it be held. Um, well, can I share that? I, mm -hmm. I appreciated that so much. Cause I think, um, as a, not overly sensitive, but <laughs> as a sensitive person that I feel sometimes when you go to express in our culture, when you go to express something that it's just moving to you or where a dog barks something that's moving to them. <laughs> that's our dog, Thisby. Um, But when you go to express something that's deeply moving, sometimes people rush to either talk about their own experience. Um, to They think that's connecting with you, but it actually cuts off your own connection with it. Um, yeah. And <laughs> which maybe I'm doing to you right now. And I bumped in with my own experience. <laughs> but, um, and then, uh, yeah, or they come to try to, like you said, to solve what your issue is because they care so much, but um, then it makes it something that you're a problem to be solved rather than just a beautiful living being who's on their path and that from loss comes new and that's just part of life and they cut off kind of that process. Um, so I found it really powerful and different than any other space I'd been in where you could just say what was on your in your heart on your mind in your tummy i guess feelings and have it witness and say thank you that people weren't tuning out but just to let that be enough yeah yeah, yeah. um i want to i want to make sure that we talk about uh the aspect of the ocean and the connection to the earth and the connection to mm -hmm. the feelings of loss there and the connection to personal grief um because yeah. i think people might wonder uh can i bring my personal grief to this grief ritual that's kind of about the earth that's kind of about the ocean um and my answer to that is uh well not my answer but this is i think of grief <laughs> <laughs> this way um like we were talking about grief is this it's too big to hold for one person right it's overwhelming and i think when you start to go into it you start to feel like oh my gosh i'm gonna get lost in this like endless dark uh tundra and that's terrifying right uh however all grief work whether it's your personal grief work or it's group grief work the first thing you have to do is connect to the ground that you're standing on and you have to ask that ground, that earth, to help you hold your grief. And all ritual begins with um, an invocation or an, an asking of the earth, of, of 
whoever's doing the invoking really has the relationships, right? So, um, but if you're doing it yourself, you also, you build a relationship with the earth so that then when you're doing your grief work, you can call on the earth and say, please help me hold this. Um, and that's really, that that's part of the exercise is that, and it is a downward motion thing. We go down with our grief. It's, it's soil, it's dirt, it's dark. Um, it's downward. Um, and and uh, I think yeah. one thing, right? Like everyone has the right to talk to the earth that they're on and have a relationship. And yeah. we don't, I think that's one of the beautiful things of this work too, is that we don't need an intermediary. We don't need a high priest or high priestess or whatever oracle or you know whatever we might yeah. be looking for elf or fairy it's like it's, <laughs> it's right there it's waiting for us because we are part of this world and we are the natural world and yeah. um and I, I love that aspect too that uh that healing that connection is right there and we're just holding the space for people to access what's available to them all the time and give them tools right. once they leave that they can use throughout their lives right right and some people have you know, more of a relationship with the earth, more or the ocean, um, kind of one in the same, uh, this planet that we're on um, already. And some people, we, ha we have to build that. Um, certainly where I am, it's kind of, it can be hard to find the ground. You really have to, you have to go deep. <laughs> um, but so there is no grief work that doesn't acknowledge our planet that doesn't acknowledge our earth that doesn't acknowledge this ground beneath our feet um and then there's also uh, in, in grief work francis coined the term in his in his book his wonderful book uh, it's called the wild edge of sorrow if anyone wants to read it he talks about um the five gates of grief um i, I won't say them all out loud but the first one the first gate is everything you have you will lose that's pretty simple. Everything that we have in this lifetime, we will lose. Our friends, our health, our mobility, our, our place, everything you have, you will lose. And the last gate is the grief of the earth, is the grief of, of the living world. Um, so, and everything in between, <laughs> these are all, all, all gates of grief basically are, are welcome at our ritual. Um, but I think they all kind of, lead to each other. So I think once you open one gate, um, you automatically kind of head through all the other ones. Um, so that, that much is to say, coming to the ritual, just be where you are, bring what grief you have, whether it's personal, whether it's about, uh, there's a gate of grief called that which we expected and did not receive. That's its own gate. So wherever you're at with your grief, you will know, especially when you start writing, right? It, it will come out wherever it's at that day. Um, but the idea is to just start there. If you're really at that fifth gate of earth grief, be in that gate and bring that with it. But everyone's grief is welcome. And this is really just a, a big container. And um, like Matt said, we're so lucky to be at this beautiful space and have access to the ocean. And I think that's gonna just be a beautiful soulful experience well and can i share too that i feel like sometimes with hogfish people are like oh, that's ambitious or like you got you talk about a lot of things and um i think to me it's always interesting because i feel like it's very simple which is that we're we're trying to make work that honors the relationship between all things um but then <laughs> if you start to unpack it it becomes a lot of words but i i feel like three major branches that a lot of places work with is social justice, um, wellness, well-being, um, which is kind of individualized or mind-body work. And then uh, then a third would be climate change or ecology or environment. And and hogfish itself is dedicated to the interrelationality of those realms as well as others. And it's just interesting that in our own journaling or prompts that we've been working through com coming up to this event, for me, like, um, my climate grief is wrapped up in also memories of being with my family in places that um, I loved that there are no longer experiences that I can have there um, or that aren't happening as often. 
Um, and then that sends me down a different path and just saying that that's also okay, <laughs> that um, you might even be in the ritual and thinking you're going to talk only about the damage to the coastline or the bittersweet that's taking over or, 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 and then it might head you down a whole new path. And that's all part of it. And that we're holding all of that um, for each other and with each other. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Anything else we want to say? I mean, we could, we honestly could keep talking about this forever and maybe we'll do a second one, but um, yeah. we just kind of wanted to give everyone a, an idea of an overview of what to expect, um, kind of where we're coming from, uh, what grief work is. Matt, anything else that we should chat about? No, um, I think thanks to the Onion Foundation, we are able to offer this uh, at a sliding scale of tickets. So kind of pay what you can. Um, and there's 10, 25 and $50. Um, we're so grateful for that. And to the Wells Nature Reserve for their hosting and support. And uh, yeah, that come feel free to experience and be as you are and dress as you are and be a part of this community that's trying to figure out how we move through something that is way bigger than all of us. And it seems to me that one of the only ways is for us all to make soul contacts with ourselves and each other and this earth. And then maybe from that, we can start to find a way forward. So this is one small pebble in that way but we ask you to join us and write to us with any questions and um yeah come join us yeah thank thanks. you Lucy. thanks matt <laughs>